Okay, if you clicked on this video, it means that you want a software engineering internship. You're probably a computer science student, maybe a sophomore or junior, or an overachieving freshman. And you've taken a good number of intro CS classes like data structures and algorithms, Java, Python, or C++, but you don't actually have an internship on your resume yet. Which is weird, right? Because it seems like everyone else does. You might constantly get recommended videos like a day in the life of a Fang intern. And God forbid you open up LinkedIn and oh, look what we have here. Your high school friend has just accepted a full time offer at Netflix and is pretending to be grateful. So you try searching for jobs, but you see that every position requires you to have a ton of experience, which you don't have. So what are you supposed to do? In this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how you can get your first software engineering internship so you can finally get something on your resume. Okay, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about my past experience. I just finished up my second internship at Shopify and earlier this year I interned at Amazon. Now, while these are pretty well-known companies, it's not like I started like that. I did a bunch of smaller internships that helped me get that first interview. And even before college in high school, I was volunteering doing research on paid internships, all with the hopes of working my way up to a FANG internship. See, the first thing you ought to understand is that no one truly starts at a name brand company, or at least 99% of people don't. You have to slowly work your way up from the bottom. Started from the bottom, now we're here. I started after my freshman year of college working at Modern Woodman, a local insurance company in my hometown. It was a pretty small company, and honestly, I was happy that they were even paying me in the first place. They gave me the first real thing that I could put on my resume. Then, the next year, I discovered Lead Code and started studying for coding interviews. I also got a referral to John Deere, which is a larger company that's also headquartered in my hometown. I was able to get an offer, and then I interned there after my sophomore year of college. These first few internships helped propel me forward so that I could actually get the first interviews at companies like Amazon and Shopify. My first tip to get your first software engineering internship is to apply to small local companies just like I did. If you don't have anything in your resume, don't even think about interviewing for name brand companies like Uber or Stripe. My first company, Modern Woodman, was literally a 20 minute drive from my house. Your priority should be grinding applications for super small positions. And forget about the pay. Honestly, as long as they're paying you something, you should be happy. Here's how you find local companies that are hiring interns. In Google, you'll want to put in different keywords like software engineering, software development, backend, IT intern, and then insert your city provided you live in a small town. If you don't live in a small town, try to look for surrounding areas of your big city and input those names into search. You can then start to look for non on name brand companies that ideally aren't even tech company. It could be a local IT company, an insurance company. They could do anything, it doesn't matter. You just need to find positions that tons of people aren't fighting over. So you can finally get that first position on your resume. Now, another thing that I kind of lucked into is that I was actually trying to find an internship during my freshman year. A lot of people just don't do this. There's this narrative that companies never hire freshmen, so there's no point of even trying, which is complete BS. I have friends who bought into this for years and only started looking during their junior year of college. And then they had to do this process during their junior year, and they were kind of stuck with small local companies. Your junior year, you're supposed to have a name brand company with the hopes of getting a return offer. If you wait till then to do your first internship, you may never get the interview for a fan company. Let me tell you, I have a friend who's a freshman who's interning at Amazon this summer. So yeah, it's definitely possible for freshmen to get internships. You just have to be smart about it. Okay, principle number two, referrals and word of mouth make a massive difference at this level. When I first applied to John Deere, I didn't even get the interview. They basically ghosted me. But because I'm from Iowa, near the John Deere headquarters, I had a ton of friends whose parents were engineers at John Deere. I talked to a few of them, and one of them actually emailed the recruiter asking why I hadn't gotten the interview yet. Literally an hour after he sent that email, I got the first interview. If I hadn't known someone at the company, they would have completely ignored me and I would have been screwed. Think back to your family friends, your high school friends, and consider whether their parents work for any local companies. It could be anything. Honestly, every company nowadays needs some kind of software engineering engineering or IT support. Once you get your friend's parents number, you can shoot them a nice text like this. Hey, insert name, I hope you're doing well. I was wondering if company name had any available IT or software development internships. If so, could you refer me to the position? I'm very interested in gaining experience in this field and believe that an internship with your company would be a great opportunity. Thank you for your help. Best regards, your name. And then send them your resume afterwards. If you do this for five, 10 different companies, you're guaranteed at least a few interviews. And see, you might be thinking, oh, I don't want to use my friends to help out in my career because that's so wrong and shallow. But what you don't realize is that people actually really like helping out. If one of my friends texted me asking, oh, I heard that you're currently at Shopify. That's awesome. Could I give you a quick call and ask for application advice? I'd love to learn from your experience. I'd be happy to give them a call and help them out. Also, people's parents love it when kids ask them for help or guidance. It makes them feel important. So don't worry about it and reach out. Usually, I like to schedule a 10 to 15 minute call with the person I'm talking to so I can ask a bunch of questions and get more context on the interview. So do some research on the company and then ask about any 
open internships or positions. Mention that while you don't have any software engineering experience yet, you're happy to do anything to learn and grow over time. If you do a few of these calls, you'll definitely get that first interview. You should also reach out to university staff or computer science professors and ask them if they have any research opportunities available. If you do this with enough people, you can definitely make your way into a CS lab, which is additional experience you can put on your resume. Okay, another tip I have is to actually go to your university career fairs, at least all of them for computer science and engineering. They're really helpful when you're trying to get your first job. I have several friends who had no internship experience and got their first job by showing up to the career fair and talking to a few recruiters. One guy went to the engineering career fair and met a SpaceX recruiter who was looking for aerospace engineers. But somehow he talked his way into getting the SpaceX software engineering interview and voila, he's starting there in February full time. Stories like this happen all the time. See, career fairs aren't actually that helpful if you already have a ton of experience and you're trying to get a job at companies like Google or Uber. But at the small scale, they really, really help. Here's some tips on the career fair, and you should actually look up other videos on this topic too. Make sure you're dressed up, wear deodorant, and have a folder full of your polished resume. And once you get a list of the companies that are going to be there, do a ton of research on them, and make sure you know what their business model is, where they're located, etc. Then when you talk to the recruiter, you can ask them a lot of good questions about the culture, how the mission impacts the culture, and have an awesome conversation. Make sure you have a good spiel for the classic tell me about yourself question. Also give a firm handshake and stand up straight. If you do all of these things, you should be able to at least get a couple interviews from the career fair. Also, make sure to get a card from every recruiter you talk to and then send up follow-up emails mentioning that it was great to meet them. Also, attach your resume and remind them that you already applied to the position online or ask them if they can send you the application details if the position isn't public yet. Okay, next tip, you need to polish your resume. There are tons of YouTube videos that will help you with this. This guy, Jeff Sue, is really good, and also Code Pirates is awesome as well. If you watch a ton of these videos, pretty soon you'll have a killer resume. But here are some quick tips you can easily implement. First of all, don't put any colors on your resume. Specifically talking to girls out there, I have a few friends who are applying for jobs in tech, and they use one of those cringy, colorful templates. Don't do that. You're not applying to be a substitute teacher, you're applying to be a software engineer. Also, load your resume with keywords that make your position sound impressive. Make sure you say the words software engineering if you can, and pack the description with tons of CS phrases like Python, Java, React, HTML, SQL. As much technical jargon you can add, the better. See, the recruiter reading your resume is not actually going to know what anything means. So as long as you have a lot of technical keywords and specific numbers, they're going to think you're really accomplished. Also, try to emphasize your impact at your prior position. Like, for example, this is what I put for my Amazon description on my resume. Led the design and development of five new global API attributes on the catalog distribution services team, improving 30,000 thousand plus titles on Prime Video using Java and AWS. Created backend dynamic field containing original slash exclusive status data, saving 50 plus hours per quarter. Communicated with partners, Samsung LG, through partner central documentation to explain how to integrate all the new API fields into their pre-existing system. As you can see, I'm trying to make it sound as cool as possible with measurable targets and keywords. Next tip, start lead coding, like now. If you're watching this video and you're not already well into the lead code grind, like at least 30 problems solved, you need to start. Like literally after you finish this video, go to leadcode.com and solve two sums. I've made videos on my Notion coding interview templates. You can watch those if you like. But the most important thing is to solve as many problems as you can. Focus on areas like arrays, strings, hash tables, binary trees, BFS, DFS, and graphs. That's like 80% of coding interviews. I've never seen a dynamic programming problem, a greedy problem. That stuff just usually does not come up. See, you don't want to do all this work to get the first interview for a company that's willing to take you, and then you fail that interview. Lead code is a lifelong thing. You'll be grinding it from now all the way up until you try to become a software engineering manager. Focus on solving as many problems as possible and fully understanding them. A mistake I made in the beginning was spending hours on individual problems when it was more about trying it, understanding the optimal solution, and then moving on. I love Neat Code. That's by far my favorite resource on the internet for lead code. You can go to his website and start working your way through the Neat Code 150, with an emphasis on getting all the way through graphs and trees. Final tip and my most important advice, you need to talk to other people who have already done cool internships at big companies. Most people like helping other people as long as you're nice. I referred like 15 to 20 people to the Amazon internship purely because they asked nicely. Anytime you find out that a friend or acquaintance interned at Google, Facebook, anything like that, you need to mine them for knowledge. Keep your mind open, be humble, and kindly ask anyone who has a good internship on their resume how they got that first interview and how they passed it. Trust 
me through conversations like this, you will learn so much. It's unbelievable. And the worst thing you can say is, oh, I know. I hate people like that who act like they know everything and have zero curiosity. Like I know people who have no internships so far. They'll ask me, oh, did you intern anywhere last summer? And I'll tell them I work for Amazon. And all they'll say is, oh, that's cool. Or, oh yeah, I know. They should have asked me hundreds of questions and totally learned as much as they could from my experience. Like I literally make videos about this stuff. Why are these people not badgering me for hours asking me about everything I know? And I will still do this to other people. I've done internships before, but anytime I hear that anyone's interned at companies like Netflix or SpaceX, I will immediately badger them with 20 questions. And I've learned so much from this, it's incredible. Honestly, usually they'll have to tell me to go away because they have to be somewhere or they've run out of time. That's how much I want to learn from them. Jordan Peterson has this rule, assume that everyone out there knows at least one thing that you don't because they do. So make sure to ask them about it. And I do this for everything, not just internship stuff. Like I was considering whether to do operating systems or databases next semester. So I hit up my friend Adam and he sent me paragraphs on paragraphs of info for both of them. This is literal gold. You need to use your network to learn more about the industry. If you're interested in how I got my Amazon internship, you can watch this video right here. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to follow my Twitter and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.